welcome to International Hawaii on ThinkTech. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. International Hawaii showcases local import and export businesses to help others new to the industry and trying to get into importing, like what are some of the best, best practices, lessons learned. And today, my guest is Tony Anthony, founder and owner of Casual Movement. They're a local importing company and also an FTZ tenant. Yay. Thank you so much for joining me, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for having me, yes. Thank you. So maybe can you briefly um, explain what casual movements is, what the business is? Uh, briefly, casual movements, um, the name originated out of casual wear. And um, I was selling a lot of casual clothing. And then I came up with that name back in, um, I think it was 1985, 86. And it just lived with, with me. And then I started importing in, um, the early 90s and uh, casual movements was always the company name and uh, it uh, represented the casual clothing. So mm -hmm. and it, now we feature mostly uh, sarongs and perios and wraps. So it's like, it's a perfect name, casual movement. So it's, <laughs> it fits all occasions. And uh, you know, that's, that's the originator of the name. I should say, You're right? Yeah. Oh, how did you start? Like, how did you decide to go into the business and when you started to import? Like, what made you decide to start importing? Well, when I first came to Hawaii back in the early 80s, um, I used to go to Los Angeles. I'm, I am from Los Angeles and there's, there's a large garment district mm -hmm. and we used to buy from the garment district and we, you know, ship it over to Hawaii and I started wholesaling. And so actually, um, it started like that. And so just, you know, buying and selling, buying and selling. And then uh, when everybody else uh, that I was selling to start buying directly from Los Angeles, then I decided <laughs> well, it was time to find another place to work from. And uh, that was Indonesia. And so yeah. Indonesia was kind of coming up as, uh, as the new uh, country of merchandise. When I first came to Hawaii, it was a lot of stuff from the Philippines. And mm -hmm. then that era went, and then now it became Indonesia. So that's how I got started there. And then once I got started, I just bought a lot of miscellaneous things, not knowing, you know, you know, specifically what was going to be the winner. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but it, it, what happened in time, sarongs became the mainstay the bread and butter and, and, uh, and uh, you know, it was, you know, what, what I did the most of and continue today. And this started, like I say, about 90, 91, something like that. Yeah. Wow. And so how did you find your supplier in Indonesia? And then do you just have one well, or do you work with multiple? Like, uh, just the same way you do in LA or any garment district, you pound the pavement. Mm. You, just, you just walk around, you observe if you see things you like you know, or, you know, in this business though, uh, you got to have the eyes for what's happening now and what's going to happen maybe tomorrow. And uh -huh. sometimes uh, you can be too, too uh, forward where it's like uh, you, you bring something that's too strange and, and <laughs> the community is not ready for that yet. But uh -huh. then maybe later, you know, in six months, it might be the right item. So it's, it's all about having good eyes for, which you can market. And today I would say it's more important to have the market more so than buying because mm. the market is kind of saturated. I mean, there's so many products out there. So you got to find the right product where yesterday you could just tag along and, and, and just be with any product that everybody else was doing and you could still make a living. Mm. It's a little bit more tough. You know, I would say. Hmm. Why is that? Is it because more people are importing or there's just more? I think it's easier to import uh, from that point where it's, it's uh, not easier to import, easier to source. Where hmm. yesterday you, you couldn't source over the internet. You actually hmm. physically or you had to have some connection or something like that. But today uh, you can actually source anything from any anywhere, any company, but can you sell it? That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's not so easy to sell. And then 
At that time, there were more uh, mom and pop stores, more independent stores. Uh, today, it's more box stores. Mm. And um, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit tougher in a way, I would say. So when you had first started out, were you wholesaling to like the mom and pop stores? Oh yeah. Mostly? And, and still today, I mean, if they are still around, I mean, that mm. increased a lot and now, People are selling more online, uh, so uh, it's kind of like it's uh, we went we came back 360, you know where the mom and pops kind of disappeared, and then the box stores came in and uh -huh. the box stores are kind of disappearing, and now uh -huh. and it's coming you know strongly and uh, I think it's here to stay you know so forth yeah. Uh -huh. What is, what was the biggest challenge that you faced when starting your business, especially in Hawaii? Um, I would say in Hawaii, uh, the biggest challenge was more, um, it, 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 Hawaii has not been so entrepreneur friendly. And when I say mm -hmm. that, meaning there's a lot of restrictions, you can't do this, you can't do that, or you can't sell here, uh, you, <laughs> know, uh, you have a store, you can't put stuff outside you know, that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, so when the, the, the few shops I did have, uh, we would put stuff out after a certain hour, you know, because, yeah. I mean, you know, when, when people see a shop and they see, you know, a rack of clothing or something outside or a seating area, they're attracted to, you know, it's like uh, you're being invited, you know, and yeah. Hawaii has always been pretty strict with that until, um, uh, I would say probably in the 2000 when Starbucks and Jamba Juice came, then you saw more outdoor stuff. But huh. unless you go in certain areas like maybe Haleiwa or uh, Kailua, you might see more uh, outdoor, you know, uh, attraction. Oh, interesting. So you weren't allowed to have like racks outside the store. No, no. Had to be it was inside. always like, like, you know, you, you were being huh. regulated in that sense. You know what I mean? So it's not. It's, it's it's not super friendly in that way, you know. They 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 want to keep it a certain way, and that's how it is. I mean, today with the pandemic, now you see outdoor uh, more yeah. more outdoor seating areas, you yeah. know, because it's because the pandemic has that's been a plus sign, you know, for the pandemic, you know. Mm, getting more outdoor areas open. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Mm. And and, so, and, that, and that creates atmosphere. Like if mm. you go in Europe or you go in, in places like, you know, even Florida, California, you see more outdoorsy stuff, activity. So that, that's mm -hmm. a good attraction for people. People want And it to makes total sense here, right? I mean, we have the weather. Cool. Right. Mm. So when you were first starting out, what did your logistics look like? Like, was it just you and your car hauling stuff around? Or how did you, how did you manage to... Well, you know, you you we had the market, the the uh, the swap meet, uh, the flea market. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that was a venue that you could do, and at that time there were two. It was one at Cam and one at Aloha, and mm -hmm. uh, you made a choice depending on what kind of merchandise you were selling, and um, if you had a good position in the market, you could do quite quite well. You could make a good you could make a, a good living. People make good livings. When the market was here, but at that time, there were no box stores. Mm. So the box stores came. The market kind of shrunk. A little, mm -hmm. I'd say. So. Uh, were you wholesaling from the swap meet? Yeah, basically. Oh. You know, I mean, I didn't start out that way, but eventually, yes. You know, you start. You you because you meet people from other island. So you can't you can't dismiss sometimes even in a shop. I mean, you could. You could be doing retail and somebody comes in and says, well, hey, uh, we want to buy wholesale. Uh, you know, where can we do that? Or you can do that right here. You know what I mean? And this is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this is what we have and this is the minimum amount of pieces. So, yeah, it's it. you, you never know in wholesale uh, how things happen. It could be a retail customer that wants to open up a store. Mm -hmm. And they're just looking at what's out there, what's available. They start from you, you know what I mean? And it's the same thing in the business. I go into another store and I see 
something that I like, uh, I might buy that sample. Hmm. You know, or I try to, oh yeah, let me source that company. You know, um, as I was saying, we were in Venice Beach one time and um, everybody uh, was selling these sand pictures, sandscapes. You know, you turn them upside down and the sand just falls and makes pretty hmm. colors and all that. And it seems like every 50 yards or so, there was a crowd of people around somebody else selling the same item. Huh. So at the time I told my partner, I said, man, if we, if we could find the source on this, this would be fantastic. So all of a sudden we're walking around and there's a huddle of people and there, right on the ground was a box with the name of the company. And so today you would take a picture of it, but yesterday we just, had our little notebooks. Everybody had a little notebook and a pen. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, you just wrote it down and uh, boom, we followed up. And before you know it, boom, we were sending uh, uh, sand pitches to Hawaii. And we had a good run with that, maybe a year or 18 months. You know, so that's how it is with the business. You can have an item and you can run with it for a period of time. And then if other people catch on to it, mm. the, uh, the price that you're selling it is gets harder. A, Especially going to start dropping, and uh, either you keep selling it cheap or you move on to something else. Hmm. It sounds like the swap meet too, where I know like every so many yards you run into like the same stuff. Oh yeah, everybody's selling very similar things. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, I have a, I got a question from a viewer. I guess they want to know what a sarong is. Like we never really expect. I, I guess sarong, I assume that people actually, knew what it was. Uh, it's, a, it's an Indian word, but uh, it's very popular um, in India. Another word they use is long, uh, longi. Um, uh, perio is, I think, originally more from uh, Latin, Tahiti. Uh, lava, lava, they use that in Hawaii. Uh, it's a wrap. So basically, yeah. it's a wrap that is about 45 inches in width and about 72 in length. And uh, you, it has multi-uses. So we have to look at it. Uh, where did this come from? Well, this is the lion cloth. Basically, this, this particular item originated in the beginning when people started wearing clothes. And so yeah. certain cultures uh, uh, held on to it more than others. So you find a lot of your Asian cultures or South Pacific, they, you know, a woman will go out in this and it's just, this is perfectly fashionable, normal, acceptable, um, and uh, quite nice because uh, you can uh, wrap it so many different ways. Mm-hmm. So one item that you mm-hmm. can make into a skirt, a dress, a head wrap, uh, you, can, uh, you can use it for basic things like covering a table or a chair. Uh, it, it has multifunctions. Actually, it's the most sustainable item in textile. That you huh. can I mean, there's nothing that you that has so many multi-uses. So, many uses. so mm-hmm. I think the most contemporary word for it is uh, really a wrap, because sarong is kind of like not everybody knows that, but a wrap everybody mm-hmm. knows as well. It's mm-hmm. not a burrito wrap, but it's uh, <laughs> just it's, like a burrito. Wrap. It's, it's just, <laughs> The clothing, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it's it's nice because uh, you know you can make changes, you know, yeah. you rate yourself in different ways, or you can utilize it how you feel uh, it's the most appropriate. You know, you might get cold and you put it around your shoulders, mm-hmm, which is like a shawl. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I've sold where you know at during outdoor festivals many years ago, people bought them strictly. To put on the on the grass to sit on, hmm. you see, oh, I mean? just like a mat. Right, exactly. So yeah, it it's uh, it's universal. It's very very universal. In every country, they you know, like in Africa, it's called uh, uh, conga. Right. Um, huh. In in Brazil, also too, it's called conga, but it's spelled a little bit different. You know, uh, basically. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Um, in uh, Kikoi in uh, East Africa. West Africa is Kanga. Uh, East, uh, in, uh, East Africa is Kikoi. Uh, so but it's all basically the same thing. All the same, wrap. basically. <laughs> yeah, it's very similar. Different materials, some is, is strictly cotton. 
like Kikoi is mostly cotton. Uh, Indonesian is mostly rayon. India, it could be mixed cotton and rayon. And um, mm -hmm. you know, even, uh, even the Scottish, what do they wear? Celts. It's kind of like a sarong. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, Polynesian men, you know, they, mm -hmm. Samoan, sometimes they all wear, you know, uh, a sarong. Mm -hmm. Langi, as they call it, you know, too. Oh, no wonder it's so popular. Yeah, and I think what popularized it for Hawaii was uh, in the beginning when the, 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 the first cruise ships came over, you know, with tourists, they saw the local people uh, doing hula. And I think it, it was in the combination with the hula and 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 they're wearing the sarongs as the mm. or the lava lavas as their dress. It became popular, and they oh yeah, I like to bring one home. You know, I like mm. a lady. I want a, uh, a lava lava. I, I want some macadamia nuts, and so that's what popularized. I think uh, universal. I think in Hawaii, I have to say that, uh, and I've been in several places in my in my time. Um, there's no other place that has the variety that we have and uh, it, it stands out, you know what I mean? You go, I go to other countries and I look at what they, what they're selling as sarongs and it's, 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 it's nothing compared mm. to our, you know, our variety and, uh, and, and that has a lot to do with competition and uh, the tourists mm -hmm. that came, yeah. that, that's coming here. We, what I didn't find out until after uh, the pandemic that we got 30,000 tourists a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, uh -huh. How do you how do you source your designs? Do you design or? We source designs and we pay for them sometimes if somebody's a good artist. Uh -huh. uh, wife, she does a lot of that because uh, she was a flower arranger uh, back in New York many years ago, and uh, she has the talent to arrange and uh, create. You know what I mean? So. You might we might see something and we'll say, well, this could be a good design. How can we, uh, you know, magnify it? How can mm -hmm. we improve it? Or mm -hmm. sometimes you have something existing, and you might say, well, this can work uh, mm -hmm. with a different color background. You know what I mean? So a lot of things is is trans trans transformation. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. some some things are you you have to go with what's leading. So over here, what sells is flowers, leaves, mm -hmm. sea life. But when I say sea life, turtles uh, run faster than dolphins here. Dolphins mm -hmm. don't sell like turtles do here. And that's because of the, the Hawaiian history with the, uh, with the turtle and uh, so forth. But if you go to Florida, dolphins mm -hmm. be ahead. So sometimes the motifs, they vary on uh, the country or the state, or what's most, the most popular mm -hmm. thing. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you, you kind of keep up with that, you'll see where flowers might, you know, all of a sudden they start to wane. Mm -hmm. right? Now it's the, it's the leaf time. You, you mm -hmm. know I mean? So you got to follow that in a way where- And then keep updating your design. Yeah, yeah, constantly. And colors, you know, sort of like, we don't have a season, but still, <laughs> uh, we are influenced by, you know, the color, you know, um, uh, prisms that come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, gotta, you gotta connect to it in a way. It's so I know um, when I go to Costco, you have like a really big rack of mm -hmm. sarongs there, which is awesome. And I know a lot of companies want to get their product into Costco. Can you kind of explain how you got into Costco? Well, it started... Um, Back in the '95, I um, I start selling to Costco during roadshow, and so uh, a roadshow is a ten-day show that uh, Costco uh, allows vendors to come in. You know, once you're approved and everything, and it's also an item that they don't carry. So no. I'm not gonna, I can't uh, do a roadshow in Costco if they're selling coffee and I'm, I have coffee, unless I have something uh, unique. Mm -hmm. kind of coffee different. Right, so that's how it started. So then I started doing road shows. At that time, there was, uh, I think it was just one Costco at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would do road shows. So you do 
we did it like every two months, we would do the same Costco. So you do it for 10 days. So the importance of the road show is partly psychological for the customer because the road, the road show will teach you to buy something when you see it. In yeah. other words, because if you didn't buy it and then you come back next week and you would say, well, I wanted to get that Sarong. <laughs> well, and you're gone. They're gone. So it teaches you, okay, everything in here, I should just, when I see it, I better get, get it. <laughs> It also sources, uh, it, it, it gives you the platform to source uh, a new item that to test market it. It's, it, it also works that way as well. Mm. So, um, that's how we did. I, I did a road show for seven years in Costco. Wow. And was, you got a lot of traction during the road shows? I, yeah, I, it, it, was, it was fantastic. I mean, it was more... It was more uh, fantastic than what I would have even imagined. And huh. so uh, I would say that um, I was very successful. Um, and I like to use the term, um, it, I was lucky, but it, it was really, uh, you know, uh, uh, I won't use the word luck, labor under the correct knowledge. So it's, you know, we can all be lucky in life, but we got to work at it and you got to be consistent yeah. and you got to still hard work. Yeah. You got to just be persistent and stay in, you know, all the, all the main virtues. So that's what would happen. So once I did, the, I was successful with that. I, I saw like, okay, I got to keep, keep going with this. And then after seven years, they, um, there were some changes. There's always changes in Costco. We want this. We don't want that. And mm -hmm. can you do this? Can you do that? And at that time, I think they wanted an upgrade of fabrics. Uh, they didn't want rayon or something. So anyway, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't do anything with Costco until later, five years from that time. Uh, this was about 2005, I think. And I did a roadshow again for five years with the same product uh no because in the beginning i had dresses i had shirts i had i didn't have that i just had sarongs and baskets and it was very successful because uh -huh. we had i had a good team player my wife and um i had um there were more costcos uh, uh Open. Stores. Yeah. So at that time it, it was like five and then now i think it's seven so we uh, we were very successful. Also, too, we had uh, we we customized. We had a certain booth, a wooden booth, that was very oh. unique. It was about an eight by eight, and uh, it could hold like two thousand pieces. Wow! It was very impressive. When you came in, you saw nothing but uh, <laughs> steel, and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden you saw this little island. Yeah. In the middle of that, that steel. <laughs> That was a wooden booth, and right. people loved it. I mean, I mean, we got so many compliments on it. It was it was very successful, you know, nice. from, from the visuals as well, you know. And then, how did you transition into becoming a regular product at Costco? Well, what happened is that, you know, we kept doing it. We kept doing it, and you, like, it was going to be forever. And then uh, <laughs> there, there was a, a manager in Kona. She says, "You guys got to get this in line. You got to get this in line." And uh, I, I thought, even my dad he used to tell me that too. And I just thought it was so far away that uh, they're not going to accept this because it's, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not something that they, you know, mm. it's like a regular item. And I, I guess I was thinking like that. So finally, you know, we got the connections and we sent the samples. And then, so then it became a six month ordeal of how it was going to be done. Should it be, because at that time we were selling it on rolls with a little mm -hmm. bottle. And it was, it, it, it was, that was also our uh, complimentary way of selling. It was sold as a gift. Oh. Well, as you, we, you could see it hanging, but you could pick mm -hmm. it up. Yeah. And so people would buy five or six pieces and they can just mail it just like that. And oh, it was nice. a, a nice little package. And, and, and inside the package, it had uh, the instructions and all that kind of stuff. So 
we went back and forth, back and forth. Finally, they said, uh, okay, we want it on hangers. So mm. then we decided yeah. that um, we wanted to have some kind of unique type of hanger. And so uh, my wife, she was a very motivating uh, factor in that. And she says, let's do a, a paper hanger, cardboard. And yeah. so we, we sourced that and nice. out that we could do that. And it worked great because uh, so many people appreciated that, you know, it was at, this, at the time of recycling. You know? Yeah. And, so, and you can probably get a lot of product in there too with a thin exactly, hanger. Exactly. It, it takes up less space. Uh, you know, nice. It works perfectly. Yeah. I wanted to ask you really quick before we're, we're on our way to wrapping up, but do you have any advice for anybody that wants to start importing? Uh, my advice is that you got to have passion in what you do. And uh -huh. uh, sometimes you people are passionate from the beginning. Sometimes they collectively, they are influenced by another person, another thing, or maybe a product. And um, don't, uh, don't dismiss of uh, being small and doing things small. You do things small and then gradually climb uh -huh. up. You know what I mean? But, you know, uh -huh. have, your, have your eyes on, on the big prize, but at the same time, you know, cover yourself by just working with what you have the possibilities of doing. Uh -huh. So it's uh -huh. not like, well, I can't, I can't do the market because I don't have this or... Uh, biting off too much. And, and I would say in business as an entrepreneur, uh, a lot of us get blocked because, oh, we don't have enough money to do it. We don't have this. Uh, I don't have yeah. a vehicle. Uh, my, um, I, I don't have the right help. You know, all these are really <laughs> just excuses. Start small. They're just excuses. You just have to begin and start, and uh, just you know, uh, don't let anything hold you back. Mm. You know, just begin and 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 progress at that time. Uh, you know, step Good. by step. You know, I think that's okay. The, yeah. And where can people find your products? Um. Well, you you have casual movements. Uh, the website. Website, yeah, casualmovements.com, and um, we are like you like you just mentioned. We're in Costco. You could, if there's a Costco nearest to you, then you could buy it from there. And you are you in mainland Costco's or just Hawaii? No, no, just just in Hawaii. Yeah, just in Hawaii. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's the two main sources, and we wholesale. That's our that's our, that's what we do. So you can always contact. Uh, our website for wholesale uh, uh -huh. catch movements at Yahoo or Gmail. And um, if I'm allowed, I can leave my phone number. Is that okay? I think so. Sure. Oh. That's you want. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Tony at 808-398-8676. I appreciate great. it. Great. Yeah, and you have so many great products. I think it would be a great addition for a lot of retail stores. So oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me on International Hawaii on Think Tech. Mahalo. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Tony. Okay.